So today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about osteoporosis in prostate cancer. And so bone health is actually a big topic in some parts of other cancers and not in others, but in prostate cancer, we need to know how much do we need to pay attention to this? How prevalent is osteoporosis? And what treatments affect our bone health? So first of all, what is osteoporosis? It's a process of calcium loss from the bones that uh, tends to occur with aging. And we think of it more in females who, when they go through menopause, the loss of estrogen in their bloodstream, for some reason, accelerates uh, calcium loss from the bones. And if that progresses unremitting over years, it, the calcium loss can become so serious that people can start to fracture bones. Hip fractures, uh, compression fractures in the spine, and rib fractures are also a possibility. So uh, it is preventable, it needs to be diagnosed, and it is treatable. So at what age should someone start checking for osteoporosis? I'm not really qualified to argue about treatment of females, where osteoporosis is a bigger issue. In my world, where men are often being treated for prostate cancer with medicines to block their testosterone levels, we think that you need to check out the baseline bone density even at the uh, initiation of treatment. Some men are entering into this type of treatment and they already have osteoporosis, and uh, the, obviously that's a big concern. Others, it's good to get a baseline, and if they have robust uh, bone health and good strong bones, uh, then they either need to take something to keep to hold on to that, or they need to at least monitor going forward to see if they're starting to lose bone density at a, at a significant pace where it could become a problem. So how does one check bone density? Well, there's a company uh, that makes uh, scanners. They're called DEXA scans, and these are uh, available oftentimes in doctor's offices or in imaging centers. And they will profile your bones. Usually they look at the hip and the spine and uh, tell you uh, compared to a 30-year-old male, are you, have you got depleted calcium from your bones? And uh, it, of course, elderly people tend to have somewhat depleted calcium, uh, 50 to 60-year-old men, but there's a certain uh, degree or two, two to two and a half standard deviations off the median for a 30-year-old. You start worrying about uh, spontaneous or fractures occurring uh, that uh, shouldn't be occurring. If somebody does get a DEXA scan and they do see a depletion in their bone, is this a conversation that they should have with their oncologist, their primary care physician? Who is the team that needs to be monitoring the situation with them? I think any physician is fine. It's just that it needs to be brought to awareness. The, it's a silent process, and if, but if, it's, if it continues unremitting, it can lead to a preventable fracture. The problem is that it isn't being diagnosed, and when people are diagnosed with prostate cancer, there's a lot of moving parts. They're, worried about uh, getting cured of their disease. And sometimes, even though it is well known that these hormone blockade medications can cause osteoporosis, it gets, it's forgotten in the shuffle. As long as there's awareness and as long as a scan is obtained, then uh, the, any, any physician will be qualified to be able to uh, prescribe whatever treatments are going to be necessary. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you that all of the videos that you get for free on this YouTube channel are brought to you by the donations of wonderful people just like you. If you would like to join our cause and donate, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to our video on osteoporosis. So one of the conversations I had on um, Helpline a couple weeks ago was the concept of Gleason 6 patients getting DEXA scans to check their bone density. And my argument was, well, you should know that number anyway, whether or not you're starting treatment, and it's a good baseline to know. Do you agree? Yes, I think so. The incidence of osteoporosis in men who are not on androgen deprivation is not super high, but if it is present, and you know, there's a spectrum in the population, there are men walking around in their 60s that have osteoporosis. And you're not going to diagnose it if you don't get a scan. And if uh, someone goes on to have a fracture that could have been prevented just because they didn't get a, a simple scan, it seems rather sad. I had a DEXA scan and it was only like $60 to get and you could actually get it at a center outside of a medical office. So it was pretty easy access. So for those who are about to start treatment, at what point do you start? You have them do the DEXA scan. Is it like right before they start hormone therapy? Um, what is it? Just hormone therapy that would really affect their bone density? It is, and 
The timing is probably not critical because the loss of bone that occurs with the initiation of hormone therapy is not overnight. At the time of diagnosis, men are going through a lot of other scans and making decisions about treatment and undergoing therapy for their prostate cancer. So I don't think it has to be put at the top of the list, but I think it's a shame if it gets forgotten altogether. So as someone is starting hormone therapy and they get a DEXA scan and now we want to maintain their, their bone density, what are the you know medications that they're going to be taking and are there any possible side effects? I would say before we jump into the pharmaceuticals, which are uh, helpful, useful products, is consider uh, at least a little bit of baseline calcium at bedtime and probably a modicum of some vitamin D, or if, if not taking vitamin D, at least get a blood test and see if vitamin D levels are normal. These are all related to bone health as well. It's, there's a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that our bone remodeling occurs at night while we're sleeping. And so studies have shown that taking calcium pills in the morning doesn't really accomplish much. So you need to uh, take your calcium toward the evening, dinner, or bedtime for it to be incorporated into the remodeling of the bone. But in terms of pharmaceuticals, there's, there's a long list of medicines and they are effective. They help build bone. People often ask about things like estrogen, but estrogen only slows the rate of loss. It doesn't actually build bone. The medicines, all the medicines that are associated with building bone that we commonly use, uh, the, the oral ones are Boniva, Fosamax, Actinil. The injectables are Zometa, Denosumab, uh, Exgeva, uh, Prolia, uh, they all have a potential for causing problems with the jaw in various ways and at various risk factors. It's a dose-related phenomena, so jaw problems are not as common with, uh, with the oral, with the pills, as they are with the injectables. And it's not as common with the injectables in low dose as it is in the injectables in high dose. Use of these medicines when people have osteoporosis, I think is a great trade-off. Hip fractures and compression fractures of the spine are disastrous, destructive, uh, potentially fatal complications. So taking some risk from a medication uh, is certainly justified since uh, you can control those risks by dosing. Products that we have at our fingertips to implement, to prevent, or, or to correct osteoporosis are effective, but they do potentially have some side effects. So what specifically could go wrong with the jaw, and is it reversible if it does happen? There's a lot of remodeling that goes on in, in our jaw, apparently because of the constant use of the bones and the pressure on the teeth when we eat things and chew. And uh, I guess that is why this area becomes more susceptible to sort it's sort of like a bone overgrowth phenomena and if this becomes excessive the bone overgrowth can actually erode through the gum and become visible uh, uncovered bone there in the mouth which then can get infected and can become painful if it is uh, not treated in a timely fashion, it can lead to uh, loss of teeth. People that are embarking upon medications should have uh, regular dental checkups and they need to be prudent in terms of how much of these medicines they use. And uh, to answer your question about recovery, when the medications are stopped, it slowly reverses. So after treating so many men with hormone therapy over the years and giving them these types of medications for their bone health, how many times have you seen osteonecrosis and like what, you know, how rare is it? Is it super common and, you know, what can they look to? I've seen it often enough to be concerned uh, about using a uh, full dose Exgeva, uh, the generic name is denosumab, on a monthly basis as it is prescribed if you look at the package insert. I'm not sure of the exact incidence, but it is when it occurs, it's very memorable and it's very problematic. And for that reason, we have shied away from using it on label on a monthly basis, and we typically administer the Exgeva shots every quarter. For people who are just being treated for osteoporosis, they're being given much smaller doses, perhaps prolia shots, a half, which is half of an Exgeva shot every six months, or they're taking a medication, and the incidence of osteonecrosis in those individuals is very rare. So I've had a couple conversations with patients wondering if exercise can increase bone density, like weightlifting and things like this, to help with these types of situations, and weight, in, especially in hormone therapy. It certainly can. You run into all kinds of people in my world, and I have encountered patients that were terribly concerned about the possibility of side effects from pharmaceuticals and embarked on rigorous uh, weight training protocols to try and uh, forestall osteoporosis. And it seems like it works pretty well. 
The degree of intensity is, is intimidating, though, the type of exercise that these people have to do. But some people are capable and willing to do that, and I think it is effective. So I've seen Exceva used in, you know, you were talking about Exceva being used as a high dose and then Prolia being the low dose. Where does that fall when it comes to insurance and the concept of using it for, you know, cancer versus bone density? Exceva shots, which is the high dose denosumab to treat bone metastasis, uh, is only going to be covered by insurance. And these are fairly pricey products in men that have proven metastatic disease in the bone. So that's a subgroup where high-dose denosumab is used, and that's where the, we face a higher risk of osteonecrosis if the medicine is used on a monthly basis. Low-dose denosumab, um, prolia, 60 milligrams given every six months, is you know, much smaller dose and uh, is only approved for people to correct osteoporosis or to prevent osteoporosis in people that are taking hormone therapy. The insurance companies, where they're paying for these and where they're not paying for these, kind of drives the storyline, and I think it's appropriate. I think they are covering it where it needs to be covered, and, uh, and these medicines wouldn't be covered. For instance, you're not going to give high-dose denosumab, which is called Exgeva, to someone with osteoporosis. Uh, it's only for people with bone metastasis. So today we talked about osteoporosis and prostate cancer. Now we talked about it within the context of hormone therapy, but for those of you maybe who are in Gleason 6 situations or maybe you're not taking hormone therapy, go ahead and get that DEXA scan. Your bone density is a really important number to know. It's going to help the longevity of who you are as a person and help your body go through these treatments. And it's important that if you are going to embark upon hormone therapy that you know those numbers, you have these conversations with your doctor and you know ahead of time that these are the types of treatments I have available and these are the possible side effects. If you know ahead of time, you can avoid a lot of situations. And it's important to think of your, your whole body in the process, not just thinking about treating the prostate cancer itself. Please remember that we are here to help. So thank you so much for watching these videos. If you would like to visit our website, pcri.org, you can do so, but also know that there's a helpline available there. These are men who have had prostate cancer and they know a lot about it. They've been trained by our medical oncology team and they can help you with your specific case. What they do is they give you information and help you research so that you can have better conversations with your medical team and have a better outcome for yourself. You can visit um, and find out more at pcri.org forward slash helpline. Please remember, you're not alone. I hope you have a great week and subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed. There's new videos just like this coming out every week.